hardest part of starting is starting, right? And figuring out which idea to work on, right? I think generally um, you probably all have a vision of some kind. Uh, you wouldn't he be here if you didn't. And I feel like the, the process of entrepreneurship is often, you know, figuring out an idea that, uh, or sort of like a space in which you want to operate in, and then um, sort of staying in it long enough to figure out the most simple version of um, what you're interested in. So you're all obviously here because you're interested in health, right? Cool. And then there's some segment of health that really sort of fascinates you, and you see an opportunity inside. And um, I think that uh, the beginning is always that way. I think that you also end up working on something that you know a lot about, and you may not know you know a lot about it, but, um, or that you've sort of thought about for a really long time. Um, and one of the things that I've sort of worked on, social technology, social networks, web stuff for you know, basically my whole life, I've been on every single social network there's ever been, whether it's been Prodigy or CompuServe or ICQ or IRC or Gopher or you know, the original BBS systems, like all this kind of stuff, I've like been a member of all of them. Um, and one of the things that I remembered from the early phases of all of those was this really awesome time when it was very small and intimate. And so I, I, I was thinking the, the big sort of idea I guess I had was taking that moment in time in a network where it's super intimate and super uh, personal and just locking it in and keeping it that way forever. And so like that was kind of the, the main sort of thesis that I've had on, on PATH since day one. And, if we could sort of create that environment, then um, it would be this really high fidelity, really high quality sharing experience, um, and this way to sort of stay connected to the right, like the people you love, people you care about, not just sort of like everyone you've ever you know, met in your life, and that that would be this sort of personal, more personal network, and the idea of just kind of like locking it in place, and, and not necessarily always the same people, but maybe the right people, like all throughout your life, um, that could be like a really interesting experience. and so. Um, we've been thinking a lot about that since the beginning. But, you know, I guess I tell you all those stories to tell you the story that, you know, I think the process of starting is often just like taking a look at like broad swaths of data and looking for patterns and trying to figure out like, okay, like now's the time to land this idea. And then between, in the time between the first version hitting the App Store and you looking at that data, how many iterations did you, did you move through of this concept? After we launched V1? No, after you looked at the data. Oh. There's a, there's a, <laughs> there's a gap there. Like, how, did, how was that process for you? We started out um, with a completely different implementation. Okay. And so the original version of PATH was actually just um, you take a photo with the stock camera that comes with the iPhone SDK and then pop open an email and then... Uh, you could type into the email with the photo attached, and then uh, the software would automatically attach the little Google map into the email, and then it would send it to this like email list that you had uh, curated. And that was it. And that was the first version of Path. And um, we actually learned a whole bunch of things about p what people would post um, based on that. You know, people would <coughs> post music, they'd post photos of what they were doing, they'd post photos of who they were with. Um, and so we, we, wa we looked at all of the data around how people were using it. They'd, they'd post photos of the radio when they were in the car, you know, and so there'd be this awesome pivot on the data around, you know, I'm listening to this song and I'm like driving down the, one, the highway one, right? And so um, we tried to kind of start to take what we saw in that behavior from this very early version. We actually called it Path Capture. What was this called? Capture. On the, it was like this like iPhone app. And, um, and we took that data, and I would say we probably did maybe five iterations, I guess, between that early version and then the version that we released into, into the App Store in November of 2010. Did you know when Does that something... that answer your question? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And how did you know when something wasn't working or when, there were, when to kill something? It's really hard, actually, in the first version. Like, that's kind of one of the, if I could leave you with one thing, I guess. Like, you know, we released this first version of Path and we had all these assumptions. And it had actually had been through this, like, process of, okay, we created this, like, really simple little thing that sent emails and then we turned it into an application and we built a cloud and, you know, we started getting everything going. Um, but the first version, we had a whole lot of things we were in love with. I guess I tell this story is there's like all these conceptual things you fall in love with, right? Like when you're building a, when you're building a product and 
um, and then you sort of merge it all together and you're getting good feedback from the customers and your beta testers and then you decide like all right I think this is pretty good and in our case we like flew to New York and like showed it to Walt Mossberg and we're like this is the future um, you know and uh, and and there was a bunch of things that um, were good and a lot of things that were bad and um, I think that's the reality of launching anything, right? Like you sort of like get as far as long as you can to where you think you've got like a really good um, version that's ready to go and then you have to push it out the door. And Reed Hoffman has this thing like if you're not embarrassed of your product, you waited too long, right? Um, do you believe that? I do to some extent. I think that it's worth taking. In hindsight, I think I would have taken a little bit extra time um, it depends on the medium too, right? Like on the web, it's easier to push out something that um, isn't as far along as you'd like it to be. But the lesson I've learned in the app store is it's like as unforgiving as launching a movie, right? Like you really, really want to make sure your bows are tied up in the app store because you can't change anything for like two weeks, right? And so if there's a bunch of rough edges, like it's really hard to get an iteration out there before customers are like, this sucks, and you've got, you know, 2,000 two-star reviews. And so I think developing for um, mobile is a little bit harder um, just because you have to really package it up nicely and, you know, you've got to have a nice user experience, a new user experience because there's no personalization of the app. Everyone downloads the same version of the app and so you can't do the kind of stuff that you can on the web. And so it, it takes a little bit more care um, than, than, than it otherwise would, I guess. So path is and you've mentioned this a couple of times, about like a place for trust mm -hmm. and for all of us building healthcare products, having empathy and that compassion within a product is a, is a real challenge. Um, how do you think about building trust and empathy and compassion and emotions into the same app that everyone downloads? The other thing that you think about a lot, which will inform the entire future of your company in, the, in these formative days, is what your values are. Right, like what are the what are the values on which you make decisions, right? And um, at Path, it came down to some some um, some simple things. You know, it usually comes down to like three to five concepts or conceptual things that like these are our values, right? And at Path, you know, we really wanted it to be very simple, right? And simple doesn't always mean that it's just clutter free. It means that you've spent enough time going through a problem to. Uh, get to the solution that um, ultimately feels inevitable, right? Like simplicity means that when the user touches it, they're like, oh, why didn't I think of that, right? Or oh, I, I don't, I, they didn't even have to think about it. They're just using it, right? It doesn't mean necessarily that it's like clutter free or there's less buttons or anything like that. It means that you spent enough time in the problem to get to inevitability, right? And we also um, cared a lot about privacy, you know, and um, trust. And those were things that we, we really wanted to make decisions based on those things. Like we wanted that to be a core value of the company, right? And so um, those things um, begin to inform like all the decisions downstream. I remember back still to this day to the first three months of PATH, I just sat there many late nights looking at a single one page Word document or Google Doc that had our values in it. And I would sit there and I'd iterate through them and I'd have like the core value in bold and then two or three sentences underneath each one. And I just, I still do that to this day. <laughs> you know, I'm like, I look at them, I'm like, is this, you know, and, and to, the, to this day, like we're, we're pretty solid on what our, what the, what the top bold word is, right? But um, the, the, the individual's descriptions, I feel like I'm constantly synthesizing and, and trying to make sure that, that uh, providing a clear communication of what that value means is, is really important because those are the things that inform the culture. And what have you learned since you uh, integrated Nike Plus into Path? Um, the product, initial product, was all focused on uh, mm -hmm. photos, but people would do really interesting things with the product. They would screenshot different apps using the iPhone screenshot functionality and then upload them to Path. So we started looking at um, talking to users and looking at the data and aggregate, and we were like, whoa, there's like all these screenshots of different apps. And, uh, and one of the most popular types was the running map, 
example. We were like, oh, that's pretty crazy. And it was like Nike plus GPS, right? And so we, we, we completely redesigned the product around the data that we saw and the behavior that we saw. If I learned one thing at Facebook the whole time was that um, if people are trying to do something with your product, like get out of their way, right? <laughs> um, in terms of the content that people were creating, we were actually just getting in their way often. Right? We were like, yeah, put all these tags on here and do all this stuff. And people didn't want to do that. They just wanted to screenshot an app and put it in there. And they actually wanted, you know, was producing screenshots of apps, which we had envisioned being part of this more trusted network. And so as we kind of came along to actually doing this, we, we um, actually ended up having, the ironic thing was is um, Nike reached out to us <laughs> and said, you guys have this trusted network, it's family, and like, you know, we're all about quality. And, you know, the reason that we ended up at Nike was less, it was part about the product and the network that we were trying to create, but also it was about our values. And when we walked in there, I was like, we're just a little path, right? And um, we're no Facebook, right? We're no Twitter. Uh, we're not even really a Foursquare. <laughs> and uh, they're like, well, you know, you guys clearly care about quality. You talk a lot about data decision, just data driven decision making. What does your analytics setup look like? So we uh, have gone through a variety of different ways of looking at that. Um, we, uh, we started out building our own stuff, you know, using like open source analytics packages to draw graphs and things. Um, we ultimately ended up using Mixpanel uh, a lot, which um, I don't know if how many of you guys have used Mixpanel. Um, it's a it's a good 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 tool, um, and it's really actually only good for engagement though. Um, it sort of helps you understand how people are using your product, and there's, you can do a lot with it. Um, but it's all real time, so that that's really nice. Um, and I think it actually would be good for early stage too, um, because it, it's just really simple, and it, you, you sort of hit these APIs, and they it makes it a lot easier. Um, we also um, we've ended up building out. We're actually in the process of it right now. We're building out more growth-related analytic stuff, and we're having to do that kind of uh, ourselves because there's not any really good products in the market like that are a service that help you really understand like how your product is growing and why, and you know how your conversion rates are on like you know other networks and things like that. So um, we're working out um, some of that. Um, we also use this great tool called Gecko Board which um, lets you take mixed panel data and flow it into these dashboards, which um, can kind of be inspiring for your team to look at. Um, and one of them actually shows a map of all your users all over the world. And, and you can kind of drag and drop and reconfigure all this stuff. I, I really love it. So we've got, you know, once you get an office, you can put plasmas up and stuff, and that, that gets fun. But um, it's, a, uh, it's a great tool. So that's basically our analytics stuff. Um, but, you know, honestly, when you talk about data-driven decision-making, it's not necessarily about the everyday metrics. It's about trying to um, figure out behavior in the data, right? Um, and, and that can come through looking at actual data in your databases, or it can come through uh, interviewing users and trying to figure out, you know, this person's a, 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 a really engaged user of my product. Why? I think oftentimes it's the un unorthodox things that aren't obvious in the aggregate data, which tell you actually like which what you need to unlock, right? Um, and so that can be a process of just trying to figure out some like interesting patterns that you didn't expect, and then try to sort of like unlock them and see if that that causes a boost in engagement. So I'm going to ask one more question, and we'll open it up. Um, you just you talked earlier about the difficulty after path one, or the, I think you used the word failure. Um, how did how did you deal with that? What did you learn through that process? This actually happens a lot in the startup uh, world. You look around and you'll see that you know a, there's a lot of people that have ten to twenty thousand DAU uh, on mobile, especially. Um, I think that like you can actually sort of get to that level. Um, and generally, I think that's actually a, it's actually a good sign that you've got that many. I mean, 10,000, 20,000 people, that's more than my whole, whole hometown, right? <laughs> Using the product on a daily basis, right? Like, I think that's one of the hard things that we, in the internet world, we do. We're like, oh, it's not millions yet, so I've failed, right? 
um, it's not a total failure, right? It, like I said, you started for some reason because you've got a vision. Like you see, like your brain is seeing an opening that there, there is something there. And oftentimes what you have to do is like, I think of entrepreneurship as this concentric circles model where like you launch something and you get like a certain number of users, right? And like your goal is to figure out like how to simplify what it is that you launched um, to get it to like another set and then another set. And sometimes you can make that process exponential, but predominantly you can't make it exponential, right? Like you've kind of got to like keep expanding. And, um, and so I, I think that often that's just a simplification process because whatever it is that you launch the first time is usually just way too complicated, right? And so you've got to go and figure out, all right, which parts of it are completely working? Let's like make that a bigger percentage of the product and then let's cut out the stuff that's not working and um, you know, sort of take the, take the, uh, the approach that nothing's sacred, right? And, and, and that the goal is to get the, to the most simplified version of your vision.